code of ethics covers uh, employees, elected officials, and members of uh, boards and commissions, non elected members of boards and commissions. This also includes uh, people working for ASD, who are included as members of the, of the municipality. Uh, that code outlines a series of, as you can imagine, prohibited behaviors uh, in terms of operating under conflicts of interest, uh, receiving gifts. Uh, when people can, you know, bid on contracts, when they can't bid on contracts, when they have um, too much of a conflict of interest to be, you know, uh, involved in certain deliberations and, 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 things, and things of that nature. The board's role is, uh, is, is to do, you know, a number of things. One, people working for the municipality or elected officials will come to the board and they'll seek out advice about some of their own actions. And this is, a, is, this, this is called an advisory opinion. And so they'll seek out the board's interpretation of the code in light of their action and they'll ask for advice from the board. The code provides that when uh, someone with the municipality operates under the code's advice, that they have a certain immunity in terms of their actions. That provided that the, the information they provided to the board is accurate and fair and, and, and disclosive enough that they have immunity. In other words, they cannot be found later to be in violation of the code if they operate under the board's okay. advice. Uh, a second major thing that the board does is if, uh, if a citizen or, or anyone, for that matter, believes that someone has violated, someone who's covered by the code violates a provision of it, then they can file what's called a notice of potential violation. Uh, the board reviews these kinds of notices and uh, makes first a kind of prima facie determination as to whether the, the, ch the, the, the charge is plausible, whether there's some merit to it, and whether, if true, it would in fact constitute a violation of the code. If we think that's the case, then we launch an investigation. When we investigate, we're basically trying, we'll call witnesses in. The board does have, what is it, administrative subpoena power, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a certain measure of subpoena power. Uh, we'll call witnesses in, we'll collect evidence. Um, D will a lot of times find information for us as well. And then we'll make uh, some sort of uh, ruling uh, regarding regarding the matter. It's very important uh, for the notices of potential violation. One thing that's very important to, to be aware of as a board member is that these notices of potential violations are confidential matters unless the person, unless the complaintee, so the person being filed against, waives confidentiality. Uh, if they have not waived confidentiality, then you must observe strict confidentiality regarding these matters. In four years, I think, four or five years, I can only think of one. Where they waived it, right? Yeah. Almost all of them will be confidential. Okay. In fact, so strict are the confidentiality measures that, uh, per code, if the complaint tent goes public with about with their complaint, uh, then their complaint is automatically dismissed. Huh. So, and, and we have had one dismissed because of that, because the individual published an article that actually hadn't been printed yet, and then they made their complaint. Well, then the article was printed afterwards, subsequent uh, to yeah. us receiving the complaint. Right. And we had to, huh. we had to wait. They have a choice. Okay. And that's a choose your form type of thing. Right. If you choose to go public, then it's in the public. It's in the public. Yeah. That's right. No two bites at the same apple. But right. we've gone so far to tell the as the assembly because we feel the the, the 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 key for us is to keep the process from being politicized. Sure. You know, yeah. Basically, our role we see our role is at, when we're at our best, we're being proactive and, and educational. Right. Um, we're, we're corrective uh, when necessary, but usually even when we're corrective, we're hopefully just trying to clarify for people who have made a mistake right. where they've misread the code or where they weren't aware of some restrictions of their behavior. So, uh, so we've gone as far as to tell the assembly, uh, you know, that if assembly members think that a code violation has been committed by someone in the city, that they can either go public and say that they think a violation has been made, or they can go. But that what they can't do, which we felt an assembly person did a few years ago was say day after day to the press, oh, an ethics violation has occurred and we're going to have the Board of Ethics look at this, and then never filed right. any any paperwork. And, and we told that assembly person that uh, you know we would not have accepted paperwork from them at that point. Only one bite at, at, at the apple. Sure. Uh, the same will be true for some advisory opinions. There will be some advisory opinions in which the person has requested confidentiality. So the same will be true there in the sense that okay. you have to observe uh, confidentiality regarding, regarding these matters. Now, um, if a notice of potential violation is ultimately found to that there is no violation, uh, then the matter is just simply dismissed and, and that's the, the, the end of the day. Um, if there is a violation, 
then the findings of the board are, are public. So the board will write up uh, findings along with recommendations for corrective action, and that will go public and that will go up on the website. For the, note, for the requests for advisories, when they've been asked to be confidential, uh, we will publish, and if all our opinions get published, so there can be guidance for other people who right. are working for the municipality. When people have asked for our opinions to be confidential, we will publish something, but what we do is we scrub all the personal details from it, so someone reading the opinion would not really be able to define who, what, who it was who was asking right. for that opinion. Um, so we do. Requests for advisories, we do a notice of potential violations. As you'll see today, we review disclosures. We have disclosures typically from uh, ASD, so school teachers, mm -hmm. elected officials, and, and again, other me members of the municipality. Typically, the, these are either in terms of gifts that they've received, which the code has several things to say about, uh, or about potential uh, conflicts of interest that they that they might have. So you've, you've done yours today, right? right. So kind of, yeah. and you know that from the, the university, right? right. You know, that, that, yeah. uh, that, that uh, conflict of interest requirements yeah. from the it, with the, uh, uh, it the executive necessary. act, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. the executive yeah. ethics act, the blue form, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, and then the last, I would say, the the last thing that we do is our uh, educational function. And that is where you know we try to get ahead of certain issues, and we'll start to, and we'll be exposed to one of these today. Try to get ahead of certain issues where we see that there's particular problems, and uh, either inform you know the requisite members of the municipality or the public at large uh, of these problems, and, and try to, to educate individuals about the nature of the code, the requirement of the code. To some degree, this often requires. Explaining to people the nature of professional ethics, and you know, as, as you know, you probably encounter right uh, for for many people who, are, particularly people who are not in professions or, or lack a military background, right? Right. This concept of there's one way in which you act with your friends and peep your neighbors and thing, and then there's this fundamentally different kinds of requirements for when you're in a professional context. Right. Um, that's that's a, an alien concept to to many people. Uh, and so a lot of times we're, we're quite frankly trying to educate people just simply about that, that yeah. um, that conduct between friends uh, is not the model of conduct in, in a professional relationship. Yeah. So you get a lot of that too. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, especially in Alaska, you, you probably have experience elsewhere, I mean, but particularly compared to most places in the lower 48, the level of professionalization in Alaska tends to be quite a bit lower. In many ways, that's a good thing, right? I mean, I think professions here tend to be more collegial, and people tend, people tend to be more friendly with one another. Um, the downside is, at times, the the level of you know attention, particularly to appearances, appearances of impropriety, appearances of conflict, uh, is not really where it needs to be. Right. So that's, I'd say that's that's what we do. One of the one of the things that's as I find it sometimes difficult. Um, in, in your particular case, you have an in, internal conflict within your own household. An awful lot of what we deal with is the school district. So if we get into a confidential list, you, you can't discuss it with your wife. Sure. Which, because who knows who she's talking to. I'm not saying she'd do maliciously. Right. It's just, it's just this is an awful small town. Yeah. And stuff gets around real fast. Yeah. Now, I think my wife still wonders what I did for 21 years in the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Well, did you have to kill her if you tell her? <laughs> Probably. So, but yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah. So it, it is it is a little difficult because we have when we get into fortunately we don't have any notices of potential violations on here. Um, in fact, we're going to discuss a procedure. Oh, for can this. I ask a question? How often do you get those? As a, or how I guess we get those. How often do we get those? As a when we get as a when we get five last year. I think five ish. Yeah, five or six. So it's not. Year. They aren't frequent. I mean, there's no. some consistency, but it's not. There's not a high volume anyway. They can be very time consuming, yeah. right? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. And what we had to do on a recent one um, was we had to hold. There was a. There was a. It was time. Uh, you know, we had we had to make a ruling really relatively quickly because there was um, a time deadline to work with. Based on the issue that was yeah, based on what it was. Right. So we, you know, we sometimes we had to, we were meeting well, at least every other week or every week for a while. I think we, we met we week. met four weeks in a row. I yeah. think or four out of five weeks. So yeah. just be aware of that. Sure. I mean, obviously, but if you can't make them, you can't make the meeting. Right. But but at times, 
uh, the load will go, gosh, we went, I think, three months last summer where we didn't even meet. The load was just so light. There okay. were some scheduling conflicts, and we just didn't Everybody's meet. Fishing. But sometimes when it, when it happens, uh, there are times where, you know, if someone has a request for an advisory opinion, those are also, also time sensitive. If sure. someone wants to do something and they need advice, or for these uh, notices of potential violation, we typically do need to hold emergency meetings. Uh, and we may meet two weeks in a row or, you know, three out of four weeks or, or something like that. <coughs> what about advisory uh, reviews? How, how often do those? Uh... Not as often. No, okay. It seems like, seems like we had two or three last year. Yeah, I mean, it used to be the other way around. We used to receive a lot of it requests for advisory, and there, there would only be a few notices of potential violation. And last year was, I don't know if that was a quirk or the new trend, but there were only, I think, two last year, right? <laughs> Typically, I'd say we've had more like a half dozen. Okay. Oh, by all means. Uh, number one, we're on the record, so right. cautioning you against playful, playful banter. Okay. Even though it occasionally still I have yeah. to do this yeah. to yeah. Yeah. over there. Um, yeah. Two, uh, uh, appearance of impropriety under our code is not enough, and so it has to be something more. Um, in state law, it's appearance of impropriety you can pretty much stand by itself. Well, obviously, it's going to be a factor in your decision. Um, three is if you're interested in uh, half an hour of substantive training where I walk you through the code a little bit, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be glad okay. to offer that. Sure. In fact, I apologize. I, I guess I just assumed you were a colleague of Terry's and therefore he was training you on the topic. <laughs> uh, and after that, um, um, Chair, might be something we sort of uh, institute. It's really the, uh, I think the attorney uh, for your staff support should be training new members ahead of time, although I like uh, Terry's rendition, but maybe sure. in the pure substance of it, here's where you go, here's how an easy way to get through it. And the reason for that is this is a code-driven mm -hmm. determination. It's right. not simply how people feel. Um, uh, however, there are gaps in our code, and, and at that point, people sort of uh, have to uh, figure out implementation and interpreta interpretation. Uh, but to give you a little bit more background in that code. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get with you. I'll send you an email, see if we can get together okay. in the next few weeks. Okay, I mean, the code is all these white tabs sure. in the back here. Yeah. I, I don't expect you to read it here today. <laughs> in fact, do we even need to? Well, we have to look at it at some point when we get to item number D. Because we have to, de we want to formalize our procedure because it, it is, as we discussed later, it, it, there's a regular procedure and we want to make sure that we do it properly. We also create forms that we send out to to the people. Um, so it's it's been, it's not all dry because there's, we had some pretty interesting discussions in here. Um, and the training that that D uh, provides um, uh, is invaluable um, because she's been in and out and around this code significantly between her and then uh, we Julia. have available to us Julia Tucker who is, she is the assembly attorney. Mm -hmm. well, she was involved heavily into the drafting. So she has okay. a background and knows what the intent was necessarily, which helps. And she's been after us to be a little more aggressive on some of the things that we can do. Uh, we've, yet, we've yet to institute that necessarily, but um, we are getting, I think, more, more, uh, what you say, uh, assertive. Assertive, I suppose, yeah, as a board. Dropping the hammer. <laughs> Taking them out to the woodshed. We haven't quite done that yet. <laughs> um, and, and for today, by the way, one of the things we do is. Um, um, the, the legal staff, we try to provide you with the relevant code section so you won't be skipping around today. Um, former counsel, uh, former deputy municipal attorney, I think took a, a more, much more hands-off approach to this, but I, I think you meet once a month and you need more guidance. You need to know which code section it is quickly. Um, you need for me to talk to some of the witnesses ahead of time uh, to the extent it involves sort of municipal uh, logistics, what's going on, and so I've been trying to take a more active role, and I, th I see that sort of increasing. I think that you need more input to be effective when you only meet once a, a mm -hmm. month. Some of the boards and commissions, the staffer has the whole recommendation in writing, five-page mm -hmm. recommendation. I, I don't know if I have the time, or do you want to really go there? I think this involves a judgment, and that's why you're selected for this board. It is applying a judgment to the code. 
it's not simply a staff recommendation, but you also need the tools, which is why does purchasing do such and such. Here's sort of an interesting conversation, by the way, I had with both Dennis Wheeler, municipal attorney, and Barbara Jones, is um, I think under the former clerk, we didn't call witnesses. And I've been questioning that. Why in the world can we not call witnesses? And I have some people potentially lined up for one of your discussions today. Why can't we do it telephonically? And we can find no reason why we can't do that telephonically. Well, we, you we, may have to appear in person. We've had to call witnesses. Well, you mean call them telephonically as yeah. opposed to being here in person? Yeah. I don't have no reason. reason why it's being recorded. There's this no this meeting's been noticed. So, and and so I would re recommend a departure from that sort of practice of this board. Mm -hmm. That you know when you need five minutes worth of advice from four different departments to make your decision to call them in is time consuming. So uh, anyway, because I have some people that are, put, are one person in particular who may be available, sort of standing by, um, I thought I'd broach that subject with you. And again, talk to the municipal, uh, the municipal attorney and the clerk's office, and none of us can find a reason why that practice was taken in the past. And you'd be it, it much more effective. It all depends on the, you know, who the chairman was and what was mm -hmm. going on, what the staff person. Yeah. I mean, we do kind of, we, a lot, we rely a lot on case law. What did they do in the past? Not that we can't break, but we have to have a good reason to break from the case. And that, but maybe the maybe the code changed. And we do have, speaking of code changes, we have several recommended uh, yeah, lists of things that we're working on that yeah. D is keeping. It's not quite ready for prime time, but there's one of the things, one of the things that we're recommending that I can discuss is the, s the attorneys, city attorney's office, and the clerk's office can bring notice of potential violations to us as well. Okay. So, um, and we're asked, we're going to ask the assembly to add the ombudsman to that list. Some people don't want to bring this. It could be an issue with, um, you know, because we watch. Uh, we watch government officials or elected officials. There are elected officials out there. You'd be surprised who's elected. <laughs> but people who run, as an example, can I use what type of sure. Sure. Okay. road service agents? Road service, well, Here. the people, you know, in the road service areas, those people elect their, their members of, the, of that group, of the board, and then they help decide who the contract is. So we have in the past have where the person doesn't want to bring it forward because they have to live next door to this person. Right. Well, if the ombudsman brings it up, or the city attorney or the clerk brings it up, then we can remove that person from, uh, and talking to, I, I As a complainant or yeah. petitioner, instead, instead yeah. they're simply a witness. I'm sure. That makes so sense. It, it's it kind of like, a, I mean, if you live in a neighborhood with a homeowners association, exactly. you don't want to, you know, necessarily go over to your neighbor and, and tell them that they need to clean their, their uh, yeah. yard up. And, and I get those calls because I'm the president of my homeowner association. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, right. so well you, want to, you want to be able to call somebody else yeah. to kind of diffuse what could be a... Um, uh, and, it's, and that's delicate. Right. Um, so, and I guess we do have to go over one notice of such violation here. And if you ask your question, that's 2013-3. So, so far we've had three brought to us. Um, is there anything else you want to include? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking about, <clears throat> um, so in terms of you, you are now subject to this code right. uh, as a member, uh, unelected, appointed member mm -hmm. of a board. Uh, so you might want to review that section of, of the code. Mm -hmm. uh, as I recall, the biggest the biggest issue is that this means you, you may not um, you may not participate in, in, in partisan uh, municipal political activity. Say that again? You may not participate in partisan political right. municipal it's activity. Right. So you, you may don't not have to go to fundraiser. Yeah, you can't. You may not can't contribute, contribute, you may not contribute <laughs> yeah. to candidates. I guess yeah. you could go, um, but you can't. I yeah. don't even attend because yeah. that gives the appearance. No, I remember reading that part when I was when I was reviewing it. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. that's that's probably in terms yeah. of your own personal behavior. Yeah. I think that's the, the biggest. Yeah. I think that's the biggest one. Yeah. You know, one not you know talking to your wife about con the confidential matters, right. but the, but now, I, if she I, wants I to if she wants to contribute, by all means, or or put a sign in the yard. And, yeah. Okay. <laughs> My well, the sign in the yard, I don't... <laughs> my homeowner association, you couldn't put a sign in the yard. Uh, we, we almost never do because our, our political viewpoints are, are not... 
They're divergent. They're divergent. <laughs> yeah. So our, our, our house is normally off limits for any of that anyway. So, yeah, that one. That one. That so. one's tricky because we're a community <laughs> property state, right? And yeah. so, yeah. So I would I would recommend against yeah. that, but. I've actually, but, and, and again, I mean, and again, you know, it's, it's, you know, my, my matter as 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 someone who actually does work in professional ethics is, is I do like us at least as a matter of prudence to kind of push into those concerns about appearances too. That you know, I you know, I don't want to be a board member on the board of ethics and have my wife have a big, you know, vote for so and so sign right. on my front yard, right? And then the so and so's opponent has something that comes, about, uh, I you know. Yeah, I you know I've just tried to stay you know again I think you know it's particularly when you're talking about a matter of of a public board or commission sure. the, the the appearances be, because you know you're asking for public trust right you're asking that the public trusts us to by and large be impartial right in how we do this that doesn't mean you are however immune from the statewide. Political races. So That's right. You can't yeah. use that as an excuse. No, not I saw it. it was specifically right. it's just, it's just <laughs> municipal. In, in, in I, I wish it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think another thing you're going to find with here that about two thirds of our paperwork involves school district. Hmm. Interesting. I, 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 I wouldn't have thought. I wouldn't have thought that. I would say. Wouldn't you say about two thirds of it? Yeah. So huh. I mean, it's wow. going to affect you because of your yeah. life. You know, sure. a little, little bit more than it does right. the rest of us. Yeah. You know, interesting enough, I, I think that's true. We get all this paperwork from the school district, but the system itself, I'll tell you, has a huge impact on the employees in terms of disclosures yeah. of financial interests. That employees are thinking about that now, right. or yeah. um, or conflicts. That it's got every employee that now going up the line. It's really a very effective. With just so you all know, it within that sphere, the employees being concerned about their spouses who have a contract with the city, or that that really has. It has uh, been, an impression has been made. Right. I think the school district, you know, go ahead. I've got a uh, solution to a lot of these, and that, the one, you know, like I've said, you know, most, well, I think most, if not all, the teachers believe that they can accept any type of gift. If it's over $50, they have to fill out paperwork. But if, if we made a ruling or something to the effect that anything over fifty dollars has to have prior ethics board approval, and I think that would stop There's, a lot of that it. That will come up a little later because I have a discussion about that. Yeah. Here. Okay. Um, I, I and I'll, I'll discuss it when we get to that. But sure. that's 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 interesting. Yeah. You brought that up. Was there anything else before we I move do on? Think, I do think that's it. I mean, again, an ideal go through with, with the code, and, and it's, it's valuable because the, <coughs> the code is very much a product by committee. And right. so there's all, and, and because it was a product of a political committee, I'm going to be honest with you, there's, 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 one, it's, it's laid out, and we've already had problems with it, because it deals with different segments of the municipality at different points, but some of those people fall into two or three categories. Right. Sometimes we have very strange overlaps or a lock, lack of overlap or an implied overlap. And then the other thing is because of just individual issues that come up, there are all sorts of squirrely things in the code about whether you can be uh, what a consultant for someone. Julia hit us with that a couple years ago and, and it's like, why is that even, why is there a specific, she's like, because people wanted a specific provision allowing them to do certain kinds of things. And so it's, it's worth it just to kind of go through D, just to kind of get the lay of the land. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. And this is all of it in its mm -hmm. entirety that applies. Yeah, but you might want to go up to the website and download sure. the, the code itself. And oh, is that is that not what's in here? This is just so that. Well, that's all. All those white tabs are the code. But okay. We, we generally, and you, I don't, I'm not saying you can't take that book with you, but gen we generally leave it so Lisa can bring it back to us. Oh, this doesn't go with me. It, it, it can if you yeah. want to. No, I, can, I can print it off. Okay. So I don't but have a problem. That way she could update the book. That's sure. We, Okay. Until Lisa has been our staff, you know, under, under the current clerk and Lisa taking over that role, we are so more, more organized than we ever were. It's, we all had several notebooks in front of us. Right. Trying right. to get, he's on his computer. <laughs> yeah, he's on his computer right. looking up stuff. Not looking at his email, however. I'm on Facebook <laughs> right now. <laughs> no. Okay. If you say you are. Um, I just hate to see what I will at some point provide you. And I, I, I think that this, I don't think this is in this notebook. 
I have one of those. Oh. I'll, well, I'll, get, I'll give it to you. Well, Z, how to... about if when I meet with you, can yeah, you I'll give me what I need? Yeah, I just think it's Can we do that? Yeah. Okay, so I'll set up a meeting for you. I have a small one. I'll get it to you. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I, I, yeah. just, I think that's really helpful for yeah. people to quickly find where they need right. to be. No, I, you know, and I will say, um, you know, from my, from my military background and, and uh, um, uh, having authority under the Uniform Code of Military Justice, we relied heavily on the Judge Advocate's Office to uh, make sure that we were uh, interpreting or following <laughs> it in a correct way. And sometimes I didn't agree with the Judge mm -hmm. Advocate, and I thought that they ought to be a little more on the risk side of going after somebody than not. But I, yeah, I understand completely. Well, and here you 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 have the vote. Yeah. So yeah, you are purely the judge advisory. Advocate. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you know, the panel of five, Jeff Evans. Right. Um, anything yeah, else? you'll be fine, yeah, because uh, what's, I thought what's his face was real good. Who uh, was our uh, our last Air Force guy? Oh, well, he had another military bird person on as well? Yeah. Um, before me. Burgess no, 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 was no, no, Burgess. Burgess. But he yeah. was, but he was served on Homeland Security. But I think he was Air Force before that. He may have been. Yeah, right. yeah, and he was the same. He was the same. He was all, you know, all yeah. over because, you know. Military, that's precisely the same. Kind he was of actually professionalization of that. Well, uh, you know, and for the most part, we're you know you're for the military, you're apolitical. I mean, you know, you don't really care too much about at least you know in a professional setting. Well, it makes it interesting so. because if you're active in the community at all, you'll see a lot of these people uh -huh. that we're actually ruling on right. socially. Mm -hmm. So. If I see the mayor, I, I, you know, I can't talk to him about Dan or anything. I can't talk to him anything what happens in this room. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I don't, I just don't even bring it up. Um, well, great. I, that that'll help give you some guidelines, as, and then read and read and read. Sure. And it, but it starts to make sense when he was talking about the mayor is one that the is. Is included in several different spots, right. and where it looks like you've got it nailed down on one section, you go to another section, and it kind of opens it up a little bit. And, and we've had a lot of discussion about individuals who are who are caught in more than one spot. So it's. Um, do we have any appearance requests? Is that the people you want to talk to us, or are we going to wait until? Is that under those potential violations? Yes. Okay. Any special orders for executive session this time? We may have to go into executive session when we get into the notice of potential violation. So um, just procedurally, when we do that, it's off the record? I mean, the... Well, we have two levels of off the record. Okay. Yeah, so I guess it, it's held in confidence or... Right, well, the first level is that the, the tape recorder is still on. Okay. And uh, but and that's more sort of I think doing the factual exploration and the second level is it's not on and that's when we're doing deliberations. Okay. I think this board sort of tends to move into that second level pretty quickly because you have to. It's uh, the names are going to be disclosed. Right. And There's a bunker underneath the hall that we do. Yeah. <laughs> we call it you know, super secret cone of silence. Okay. You know, okay. The, then the shadow board of ethics takes over up here for public appearances. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have, we have cardboard cutouts that look yeah. like us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, sorry, we're bantering. <laughs> you can see how easy it is. Yeah. Right. No names have been mentioned. <laughs> and she will, yeah. as she should, yeah. keep us from disclosing. It is sometimes difficult to discuss things and make sure that you're very careful. If you, ha if you hear us talking very carefully about any of the previous stuff, because it's been confidential, sure. we can't discuss it. Yeah. I'll just make sure my wife doesn't listen to the recording so she, <laughs> she doesn't realize she's on the uh, recording about that many than I did for 21 years. <laughs> I don't know, she could actually, she'd have to do a freedom of information request oh. to get to it, would she? No, you could. Could no, she just go come right in? Go right on the website, yeah. Oh, uh, really? Oh, I listened to a couple of your meetings before when I, before. Oh, geez, I've never listened to them. Yeah. I was here. So, you have to listen to the whole thing to capture the one comment, though, so I'm not worried about it. It was pretty early on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's wasn't it. <laughs> Um, to unfinished business, um, a teacher gifts, and we. This is, has, uh, Steve. This has been a big thing because we do. You look at their disclosures when we get down to looking at the disclosure forms. That probably has caused us more heartburn. And Ted, you know, your recommendation that they get that. Well, a recommendation that was made to me yesterday. Pat Higgins, a, it's a school board member. 
and he's also a client. So he came in my office yesterday at 4.30, and we, he sat down, he asked me his question he had to ask to, and I said, you know, I'm looking around, okay, there's only two of us, so it's not officially a public meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I talked to him, because we have to be careful. We, you know, it has to be, in the public meetings, if there's more than two of us, we can't, we can't discuss the stuff, which is why we don't do email voting and things like that. Um, and I, I spoke to him about the teacher gift issue because he's a school board member. And he brought up some very interesting suggestions. He said, well, what if the principal approved it if it was over the 50 bucks? I think we're, if we did that, we'd have the same problem that we had reference on the one where municipal funds were spent for advertising. We'd have the same problem because they thought they had one prior. Right. You know what I mean? Well, and that one, that's, we'll get to that <coughs> when we get to that. Is that even on here? You reported for all that stuff, but we'll, we'll bring that up. But I, and uh, that was just a suggestion he had. Mm -hmm. He knows we're going to be there at the June 7th meeting mm -hmm. and we're going to present the stuff. For that, can. D, I have not seen that spreadsheet that, <coughs> that intern did for you Fine. folks years ago. Let me see if I can find that guy. Because if we can find that, that's going to be something I think we need to present. Um, mm -hmm. It shows that a very small percentage of the schools are reporting. We, we recognize that high schools typically aren't going to report. We recognize that junior high, elementary, because middle school is not going to Because it's the elementary kids that their parents tend to give the gifts, or, you know, has been. Because you've got a high school, you know, they've got six, seven teachers. And are you going to provide, but I, and maybe I'm totally wrong, but we, I don't think, we've had some disclosures, uh, some, some issues with, with, <coughs> with coaches, but we've not had uh, issues with teachers in the high schools that I recall. It's rare. Yeah. It's it's anything that's valued over uh, fifty dollars. Fifty dollars, and we are getting. We now send them a letter. Is our letter in here? Under forms, is there filing? You know, form? I think the annual report's in there, Keith. Yeah. And as I recall, the letter was in the annual report. Yeah. It's the last page of the annual report under the annual report tab. <coughs> and the new reports on top. Well, we send. We send. We we modified the letter. The previous chair modified the letter. That's 2008, 2009. Yeah, the annual report would be a good thing to read too because the annual report will give you up to speed. The first oh, the first one? Okay. Last page, right okay. There. All right. Yeah, it's uh, page 12, the 11 12 annual report. Because we're, we're getting to the point now where this part of the discussion is um, is if they're accepting these gifts, they may have to either give them back. And we haven't actually specifically said that. Or they have to provide. There's been some discussion with us that they may have to provide a uh, show that they donated to charity. And this is kind of where the discussion is headed. I don't. I, we haven't decided as a board actually how we're going to handle that. But what it does, it's a, it's a matter of fairness. Right. Whereas you and your profession, you know, you and your wife in a double income household, you may be able to afford yeah. pretty, you know, but maybe not to the extent of the airline tickets and, and the coach purses and the diamond jewelry that have been given. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that'll be discussed in our June 7th meeting, but we've yeah. had some pretty high level gifts that have been given. You may not be able to do that, but you're, you're given a gift. And in these classes, you've got people of, of um, economic strata that are from sure. one end to the other. Right. And if a reasonable person could determine that maybe your gift could be uh, possibly used to influence the teacher to get, give that child more attention, mm -hmm. better grades, goes on and on and on. This is the reason why we're, we're, we're on that teacher gift issue. Right. Other, other jurisdictions like the city of Boston is just flat outlawed. Right. Who was that, Boston, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Because it was such a problem. Right. Um, 
He's going to tell you, I, have, yes. I have spoke with Bar Barbara Jones today, who's the clerk. Yeah, actually, I know Barbara from we both oh, work with the Arthritis she Foundation. Yeah. yeah. And she was uh, questioning uh, uh, what materials we were going to present because she must have seen some of this stuff that I had suggested we round up. And she said, D, what you are, in, uh, or what you've re referenced in your minutes is way too much. And she said her recommendation to us was to identify the speaker, whoever would be the speaker, and for that speaker to meet with uh, Ernie and uh, Barbara and for them to help you with the presentation to say this is what would be effective and this is what would not be effective. You think we're going to get maybe 10 minutes? And she would like to limit it to 10 minutes. Uh, she thought that would be the most effective. But she said for what she, have, what she saw of our materials in the um, the agenda today which would glaze their eyes over, and she thought it could be should be more effective. Now, um, one of the other questions that both she and I have is, what does this ethics board really want with respect to teachers' gifts? I've never gotten to that point. We keep saying we don't like what you're doing, and we, we want more information to the parents, but I don't see what you're. I mean, what what do you want? What is your goal? I mean, so far you said, hey, we want your assistance, and they said no. So okay, we had to make another run at them. But really, what are we trying to say? And, and does that, and Barbara didn't say that, but does that involve uh, updating of that code section? Do we want to say, uh, have a $75 gift limit, or, or, or maybe more explicit, that gifts to for supplies, uh, or I guess, I guess put more logistics into it. The current code is confusing. Um, and I'm, I, so uh, just a, a question, you know, what is it, and, and should that be done by a code change? and do it relatively quickly, but with some background given to the uh, school district. Um, the other thing is, if that speaker meets with Ernie, he's, she said, and what, uh, Barbara said, once Ernie understands the issues, he'll ask the right questions for you to bring out that information. Mm -hmm. uh, so she thought that would be uh, your effective way as well. But, but again, again and, and again, what is the goal here? What are we trying to do? When was that part of the code written? 2007. The whole thing was written in 2007. It's okay. kind of a one-shot deal. I don't believe there's been any amendments in the interim. Um, I think it is very confusing, the gift section. I mean, I can see why they, they interpret it as under 50, we're okay, and over 50, we have to... Oh, just looking at their PowerPoint that, yeah. they, that they get. Why, it's, why it's, was it, it's why was it written in the first place? Then? If it, it was, so it was never there before 2007. Well, there, was a, there was a code. There was a code, but just rewritten, updated. Okay. Okay. Substantial. Okay. Major. In fact, you know, Ken was it Ken Stout, Ken Stout, who just passed away what, a week or so ago, was the was he the chair at the time? He was. The, well, I, he I was think everybody was trying least. to avoid being the chair. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, it was Ken Stout who introduced it, and then they, they got there, and it was a lot. You know, an awful lot. Of you, you'll see, you can kind of see that when you read the code, they were wrestling with this and that and everything right. else. As an example, the assembly. Well, every once in a while, we get a question of. Advice, you know, well, what should we do? And we generally say to the assembly, well, you guys kind of govern yourself when it comes to should they disclose something. And basically, they need to disclose, and members need to recuse, right. either allow them to recuse or no, no, it's okay for you to vote. Every time uh, the downtown partnership comes up, because there are business owners among the assembly, uh, we get notices, you know, we say, okay, yeah. We've told you, just disclose it at your assembly meeting that right. you might have a conflict, and then they either let them vote or not. Um, and 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 I, so I would, I, we may need to have a discussion um, as, to, as to who the presenter is and who's more, most comfortable with presenting the facts as, as we see them. Um, and Kanesha Barbara had stated. You know, this sounds more like a work session item and uh, for the school board, but I explained that you had gone to the school board and that they had not been responsive. And so she said, so you want to go before the joint meeting so that you can have this assembly put some pressure on to move it right. forward. And when I spoke with Mr. Higgins yesterday, that was kind of my idea was mm -hmm. to, Mr. Higgins, can you allow, can you introduce us into the, because I told him the previous we just like got uh, shut down by the previous, you know, well, a couple chairs ago. Uh, Marissa, school. right? Marissa and I went, but it was a couple chairs of the school board. Oh, right. Yeah. Before um, Jeannie? No. Yeah, yeah before Jeannie. Before yeah. Jeannie. It was a, a gentleman, I don't remember his name, but we met with him over 
and then he gave me some background as to why um, the previous superintendent may not have been as well why it didn't go probably <coughs> same as we wanted it to go with the previous superintendent so I, I, I on record I'm not really comfortable <laughs> going much farther than that um, so you get it right. So we, we initially went to the school board and asked them to create a, a policy within the ASD that would cap the gifts at fifty dollars. And this was when this was at least four years ago. At least four years, probably about four years ago, four okay. and a half years ago. It was shortly before I was shortly after I was on the board. Right. Um, and the school board refused. So about it, you know, two years later we went back to the school board and at this point we asked them we were asking them just to insert language in newsletters that go out to parents right. reminding them or in some cases informing them that there is an ethics code that teachers are required to follow here's what it says about gifts and try to limit your gift giving and the amount of your gift giving um, to you know to prevent a teacher from in some sense maybe accidentally violating and you went back to, with that request was when that was just the language. That was when Cheryl and Eric came here to. Her that was brother. after they had oh. come here. That was okay. after they came here, and so but that still was during her tenure. Mm -hmm. And we we didn't, because what it does, it really puts we empathize with the teacher. Right. The teachers aren't, in my opinion, there's really no bad guys here, but we're right. trying to actually help the teachers out. The teachers are put into a position of having to refuse a gift, okay. which is uncomfortable right. for them. Um, you know, I'm sure the majority, there may be some that just take it, oh goody, but, but for the most part, and in some other jurisdictions, not this one, I'm not alleging this happens here, but I think the reason, the, the article that I read about Boston said that there were teachers who were soliciting gifts. Wow. Right. So that's one of the reasons they came through with, with a flat. Yeah. You know, I'm not suggesting that happens in Anchorage, but, there, but it, the, it's open for that potentially to happen. So what Carol had said is Carol, you know, and, and something funny happened. Um, we had Carol had come here and we talked to her about this about this issue and we had proposed this language. And then without telling any of us, she brought it to a school board meeting. Uh, you know, I or any one of us would have gone to present, but she did it without telling us. So the, I find out about this because I get a call from a news station saying, oh, this, you know, the school board just made a ruling on this uh, gift issue. And I'm, I'm like, really? Um, I talked to Carol, and Carol said that the school board, so the school board refused even to insert this language into newsletters for parents. And Carol, Carol's view was that the school board felt that this board's view was casting teachers in the light as if they were politicians being bribed. And that, that these gifts were not bribes, and that in some sense it was sort of insulting to think that they were, Do and, that, okay. and that therefore they were not going to they were not going to pursue uh, that issue anymore, except to remind teachers in their training that there is a code of ethics, and that here's the language of that code. And Do they have to sign a, any sort of a disclosure statement when they're employed? I don't I don't know. Um, we don't see those disclosure statements that they do. I don't, do, you, do you know? No, I don't know. We do have other elected officials. Yeah, elected. Sometimes. I mean, I, elected think, or I think we do at the beginning of every year. I would and imagine. We'll, so, uh, so would, if you ask I would, me, I would just connect the two. I mean, you already have to sign a disclosure statement. This is just uh, connecting, you know, a requirement to the disclosure. So, in my view, I. Where, it, where it's come up is if every once in a while somebody from will go through purchasing and they have to fill out disclosure form, right? And they'll say that they've got like you, you know, they got a spouse who worked as a teacher, right? And you know, I I don't think we've ever refused one, but they've done the disclosure. Um, or they're doing some. They actually are. They they're a teacher. One particular case, and it's not confidential, so I can discuss it. This was the only person who works on air pistols in the whole state, and you know the rifle teams all using all of them use him to work on. Them. Okay, let's. So we had to look at that, and you know, and and use that. Uh, and I, we didn't. 
put any onerous, um, but he has to disclose it every year now, right? That's right. So, yeah. Well, I, I wonder, guess, I mean, the, it, if you look at the current school board, I think, it, you know, the, the school board's changed dramatically since then. That's um, true. And you're now, we're now two superintendents removed from. Oh, that's true, too. So, you yeah, know, there might be some benefit to to bringing it back to the, the right. I, versus, and I have to agree. I think yeah. the timing is right because you say he didn't get a hold of you. And yeah. Well, he, he came in, I got a hold of him. We sat yeah. for two okay. hours and talked yeah. and I, uh, about a whole lot of issues, not just this. I'm the president of Chugat Community Council, and I got a nice memo from uh, Croft mm -hmm. and stating, you know, that he wants to meet with the community council and they want to meet with the, you know, community leaders, this sort of thing, to get a better relationship between the school board and uh, there. So I, I well, think because, right. because the Chugat worker doesn't feel like they have any representation out there because it's at large. Yeah. And so I think you're right. I think there, it, it is a basically a new new school board. It may be you know, timing is right to pursue that. Well, this, um, I, I think what I'd like to do with respect to this and to your point that we need to develop a presentation um, is is if maybe Terry could, if Terry and I could potentially meet with, her, with Ernie and Barbara and work that out and whether he or I makes a presentation, he's more actually more conversant on an awful lot of this stuff than I am, being a professional instructor, <laughs> teacher, <laughs> professor, but, um, and, and, and work out so that we do have, you know, a 10 minute presentation mm -hmm. and uh, come up with that. I make that as a suggestion. Um, does that work for you? And what what do you hope to accomplish with this? Well, one, I want to bring the issue to the whole to, to both parties. Okay. And we're meeting with the school board and right at the work session. At the work session. And but what we want to accomplish, one is like pare down what our recommendation, you know, our, our suggested. Okay. I, I do you intend? I mean, in ten minutes. It, doesn't give you a whole lot of time to put a question and answer. But if we want to just use that this as an opportunity to say, hey, we have to redo this and we have to make some changes and we want your support and we'll bring the changes to you. You know, rather than try to give them them changes, you know, they're you ain't gonna do it in ten minutes. Mike got feel were you intending maybe to bring changes? I had I was, I, but I was intending, and I think we should agree on having a punchline saying, this is what you should do. That's, that's what I was saying. Yeah, because the laundry list, she has some changes. I didn't really know, that, I didn't think that was the appropriate time. Well, again, my recommendation would be, no, not that, my recommendation would not be to change the code. Um, I don't think the code, to be honest, you know, the code's bad on this because if, if you look in the annual report on pages 9 to 11, there's an analysis of the code on this. The code's bad in that it has multiple standards about when gifts are allowed and not allowed. And the standards are not the same. Or I should say there's multiple principles. And the principles are not the same. Um, one of the principles I like, one of the principles I, I don't like so much. And I notice that in their code in their code training, they give principles, but I they give teachers the more lax of the two of the two principles. Um, the, the, the good principle, I think, is abstract, and that's the one that says that the, the nature and timing of the gift can't be such that it would lead a reasonable person to question their judgment. I think that's actually the, the appropriate standard. It, it, it's abstract, and it requires interpretation, but I don't think, I actually think it's a, it's a pretty good standard. The, the, for me, as a reasonable person, I think this is the way this board's been thinking now through a couple of iterations of the board now, is that a teacher getting a $50 plus gift a week before grades are due, that leads me to wonder about the judgment of that teacher. It doesn't now, was it intended to be a bribe, which is what the other, was it intended to influence the teacher? That's the other standard. Uh, I don't know if it was intended to influence or not. I don't even know how you use that standard, to be perfectly honest. But if you ask me as a reasonable person, if you get that kind of gift, I mean, I can't imagine. One, I would not accept a gift from a student, regardless of value, before grades were submitted. 
And I certainly would never accept a gift from a student over fifty dollars. I'd be very uncomfortable with that. Well, Terry, can I interrupt you here because yeah, this is an important issue to you. And I, is one I thought sort of a, a way that might be to approach this with Ernie when the two, if the two of you end up doing that is is you identify the problem, and the problem would be your 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 uh, types of gifts, the, the size, the timing of the gifts, and disclosure. I mean, three simple things. Here's the problem because they may not be aware of the problem. Many people are shocked when they hear about thousand dollar gifts. And the fact that a $50 gift on the eve of grades is problematic. Um, and then s possible solutions, and you could go right through them. Possible um, uh, information to teachers or restrictions on teachers, information to parents, possible code uh, changes. And then you say, and ask for their input, what do, uh, mm -hmm. get their reaction. So you've, all you've done is you've identified the problem, you've put out a couple solutions, and then get their input. Now they're, they're um, open, I think, in the, to the next move when, when that they all or you all make that decision <coughs> as to what that solution might be. So I'm not sure it needs to be quite as elaborate and maybe I've walked you down the wrong path by saying what, what, do, you, what do you really want to accomplish. Um, but identify the problem, suggest some p potential <coughs> solutions and then get their input. And again, Ernie's going to help you along in this. Um, most of them don't realize it's a problem, uh, I'm sure. Well, that in fact, that was school board member Higgins. He says, is this are you guys creating a problem where there isn't one? And then he brings up to me, there is a Spanish immersion teacher, don't know the name, who is somebody apparently is paying for this teacher to go along with a group of students to Costa Rica. Right. Well, we haven't seen the disclosure yet, if we see one. I mean, I know it happens, so I could do some research to find out who the teacher is so we can watch for a disclosure form. And I advised him, I said, I would suggest that if that's going to happen, that a group of parents get together, but don't make it one parent. Okay, you probably haven't heard the final on that. Well, this happened, I only discussed it yesterday, so you're aware of this one as well. Well, there was a group that went to Costa Rica with a teacher and a chaperone. And, uh, I mean, it's public knowledge out there from Chugiek High School. And the kids have been, a couple of kids have been suspended for a while because of their actions while in Costa Rica, drinking, uh, partying, and having sex. And uh, these are, and, and that's all part of that same deal. It's, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, it, it eventually may come here, I don't know. But some of the kids have been suspended from school for, not permanently, but because he was saying, from his information, that he thought it was going to be one parent or one set of parents, from, you know, husband and wife, that were going to be paying or maybe have paid for the teacher to go. Yeah. I, we I, don't have a disclosure form. Yeah, I, I don't know, you know that aspect of it, but I know of that it was all that group going to So, I mean, and, and he I said, this trip is not official school sanctioned. Is yes, they would be covered by the school workers. year, it, or is it during the school year? He said it's outside the school year. They don't get extra pay for it. The school district doesn't pay for it. Yeah. Students so, pay so for it. does this apply when they're not on contract? I think it's a good question. That's a good question. But uh, <laughs> further, yeah. I, I mean, to I, me, I, that would be. I, I mean, if it's out, if it's outside of the school year. Let's put it this way: if I asked him specifically, I said because he's an HR person. I said, yeah. If the person got hurt on the trip, would they be covered by the workers' comp? He goes, yes. Well, I think I think they're I think uh, school district employees are covered uh, twelve months out of the year for medical and, and those other types of issues, but. But but um, a workers' comp would have to be a work-related trip. Oh, wow. Well, then it must be work-related, versus. Um, well, I, 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 I mean, I, I mean, I in my non my non legal opinion, if I give a teacher a hundred dollars a day after school, it's still part of this problem. Yeah, but uh, that's right. You know, in, in one area, I, I disagree somewhat with you as far as timing goes, because even if if you're a teacher and I go in there after even after the first week, I'm so and so's father. And, uh, I want to just give you a gift for nothing, nothing at all. Here's a gift for $100, $160 or whatever. Now, you can't forget that when the grades come out. You know, you're going to remember that. 
And so timing really doesn't, to me, doesn't really mean a lot. Or how, or how you, how much attention you apply to that person's child. Right, just so long as he knows it's, I'm that person's father, you know. And you know, you can't forget, right? you know, things like that. And it's just that you know, know the timing timing is, is, is important such that a smaller gift but timed closer a to the moment gift, of decision yeah, will yeah, have sure, maybe yeah. some studies show it would have more psychological impact than a slightly larger yeah. gift huh. given yeah. further away from the time yeah. of decision. But they but they all have they all have, yeah. I think that's I mean again I gave yeah. you guys I sent that article, I'll send it out to you too, okay. that the psychological literature that shows that it's surprising even this yeah. was done for doctors in terms of pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. Even the little notepads huh. and the pens, it adds Adds yeah, up even a series yeah. of small so, gifts. You know, but you know, we deal a lot with with service organizations that make larger donations to a teacher for classroom uh, um, supplies, and supplies and stuff like that. You know, so there should be something in the code that would cover that. Like Which if it's from the P PTA as a whole. And we, we, as you know, we don't do anything on the PTA. Gives we we it, don't. Yeah. But but they still they wouldn't have to come to us. There's other service organizations like uh, a Rotary the Rotary that when I was on the department, they paid for me ticket and lodging to go to a crime conference and bring information back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things like that, you know, there should be somewhere in the code that allows stuff like that, you know, from a service organization. So. And if we're going to change, make some changes, let's make changes, you know, so we do it all at once, now that, rather than piecemeal. No, I, I, and if we can get the assembly on board and the school board on board, you know, now is the time to do it. But, but you ain't going to do it in 10 minutes. Yeah. But maybe think about changes right. after you've gotten their input at this meeting. Yeah. yeah, I think you yeah. can identify the problem relatively quickly, right? And uh, and some some ideas for solutions, and then right. their input. And then I think because our focus market. on this meeting, we're not going to go off on to advertising, you know, no. or any of those other things that right. we have. Right. Our focus is just on the gifts, as I understand. So, because we can stick on with one particular issue, is why we got the school district there. I mean, right. we do have some information about, you know, that's been provided to us about whether or not to get advertised or not, but that's a whole different issue. Right. We're, our focus is just on the school. And the kids. They might they might be more receptive to the um, delegating it down to the principal level. I think you mentioned that. D. I don't know who. No, no I, that was actually it was, it was Higgins suggested that the person get permission from the principal to accept anything larger than fifty bucks. Okay, and if we rule against them, who do we? Who's guilty? The principal or the? Well, we, well, we wouldn't. The, you're saying we wouldn't get it. It would just. It would stop at the principal. His his concept. Well, I don't. I, have to, I haven't worked it in my mind out yeah. that how the whole thing would work. Yeah. But if but if the but if the principal signs off on the disclosure form saying right. I approve. Sure. Um, but it, I, I I think it. I mean, it does because because if we ask to, to get permission from every single time and we meet once a month. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking that the timeliness of that would make it very difficult. Well, I, I, no, I think it would stop 99% of them. You know, for, or, or for push it underground. Huh? Or I'm concerned it would just push it more underground than it already is. Well, no, I don't think so because they know if they were, if they get caught, they'd probably lose their job. You know, this sort of thing. Yeah, no. And so, uh, you know, depending on what the penalty is. But this one right here that we got today, you know, to me, that's, that's, out of, the, out of the bounds, it's $160, you know, f from a parent, you know, that. Yeah, that's why she has a letter prepared for us. Well, yeah. the, um, the, uh, the way the process works, because the university is somewhat similar, um, um, and whenever you, you, you know, we do, our, we do our ethics disclosure form at the beginning of the year, that's when you put where you might have some conflicts or whatever. If something, um, you know, if, situations change during the year you update it um, and typically it goes through your dean uh, and then it, it it will typically stop at the ethics officer on the on the 
the particular university campus, so UAA, UAF, or UAS, uh, unless someone is concerned that it might there might be a violation, then it would go to statewide uh, to the system office. So I, yeah, most of them, I think, stay at the at the campus at the university level versus going up to the system level. So yeah, there might be some value to stopping some things lower versus everything coming here. So. Right, and uh, you know, and this is a very good idea. We have two here, and it's no use for us to try to invent the wheel if the wheel, if they've already got the wheel. I'm just you saying know. that's an example. Right. Well, I mean, well, I not, mean but it's obviously it, it, working good. Well, it, seem, it seems to. I, you know, so yeah, you know, why, you know, we could incorporate some of that into, into this rather than us doing a lot of coming up trying to come up with some, some word like so that. that I do, I do think though. I, I like the idea though that. That if the principal signs off on it, though, that that disclosure still goes on to us. One, it's required by code, so you'd have to change the code, and I'd rather not do that with mm -hmm. this. Um, but I like that it goes on for us because it's sort of like for me when my chair signs off on that, yeah. he's making independent judgment, but he does know that the dean's office is right. going to take a look at it, and the yeah. dean's office also knows that the ethics. In other words, yeah. there is still it's not just one level review and you're out. So in other words, it puts a little bit of extra. I mean, what we want the principal to well, do is the adopt the perspective really. of the, the rat reasonable person, right? Right. And the principal looks at it and and they realize, yeah. okay, I'm going to put my name signature on this, and it is going to go off to another board of it. Right. Let me take a second look and let me really and let me err maybe a bit on the side yeah. of caution which I'd actually like to see everyone start doing in this a little bit. Okay, and, and, and that's good so long as that principal knows what the ramifications are if he's wrong. Well I think it would just be a disagreement you know, that we don't we don't view your decision as or, or your recommendation as uh, appropriate mm -hmm. so yeah, and, and, my, and I, my my assumption is, you know, within the university system that a, a dean might approve something, um, and it might get to a level above that where they say, no, you you didn't take this into account, and the person really can't do that and still be employed. Well, yeah, and I don't, I don't mean yeah. I don't I don't mean that, but but maybe a, you know a, a letter from the board of ethics that you know we feel wrong that you you didn't you know take whatever into consideration this sort of thing and he gets a letter from the ethic board and, and he'll think right next time. Oh yeah well that's I think that I think that's right I mean like yeah. you know we would you know, let's, let's, let's suppose we get one that principal signed off with and for us it's still beyond the pale he gets a letter saying look here's where we think you kind of went wrong in your evaluation right. the teacher still gets the letter that we're sending right now oh, definitely. and you know and 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 it still would be the case, and I think this would have to be made clear to everyone if we did it, that if someone were to file and notice a potential violation against that teacher mm -hmm. for having broken the code, violated the code, but you got that, that, that teacher yeah. might. Now, in your history, has ever, anybody ever done that against no. a teacher? We, we've had against coaches, but not teachers. Yeah, we had, we had the one about the code, but not teachers. And if I can make the suggestion, that idea might be one of the solutions that you suggest well, at the school right. board. And the reason I say that is I've worked uh, recently with the school board administration, and I, I'm not sure there's a total faith and confidence that principals will comply with timely paperwork in other settings. Right. Well, so no. that concerns me. There, right. they're, they're very independent. There's 127 of them. Yeah. Now this is what is what she's saying is it would would really tie into what I said when I at the start with that to get the teacher needs to get prior approval from the principal which she could do she or he or whatever could do immediately say I've got this parent that wants to give me this uh, here and here I need the principal it's over fifty dollars so you need approval and you know they could get it right then it wouldn't but, but you know, Ted that solution assumes principal compliance with this, with this whole system, well, and you may would. find that the school board and don't have that kind of confidence in timely submission of paperwork. Then maybe we the need new principals. I was going to say that might be a, that might be a different issue. <laughs> well, no, no, but I'm just <laughs> saying this solve. is a solution yeah. that you see as workable. Yeah, they say and your school, they may be not, they may not even say something in public, but they may say, no, that's it's not going to be an effect. Well, so you should offer. Right. I, my suggestion but, is you offer 
some suggestions. This was actually, but this just did come from a school board member who yeah. at least would be able to speak to it yeah. at the school board meeting. Well, and I think, and I think it's a great suggestion to throw into our list of possible solutions. Exactly. And I like this idea. Exactly. We, we kind of go in. Here's the problem. Maybe you're aware. Maybe you're not. We can maybe come up with, uh, you know, we can give them copies of like the ADN articles that have been on this issue. So I look, this has been floating around in the public. This has been a problem. Here's the way the board that the board's been having this problem. Here's some proposed solutions. Uh, you know, we do we could do this, we could do this, and we said, and we even have a solution, you know, proposal from you I don't know, board member Higgins. Until, until I got his approval to say that, I don't think I would. We'd have, have to get his approval to say, you know, in other words, but but show like, look, we're open. We're you got suggestions, we're open. We don't have a definitive solution that we've set along. We're looking for feedback. Here are several possible solutions, and I think that's right. And then sort of invite them, invite them to be a part of the solution. Uh, and again, the board's changed enough that maybe this board will will see the matter will see the matter differently. So, so how do we move forward in terms of setting up the meeting recently? Okay. Oh, well, Can you do that with Barbara? Actually, um, Barbara is um, coordinating it, and um, yes, I can go. You know. Okay, so we've, we've already had the session too. We'll take it. care of setting up the meeting with Keith and Terry. I see the reference to the requiring to, f to fill the form out. Is there any code about how a decision is made on forms that are submitted? Or is that kind of just left up arbitrarily to the board when the forms come in? Well, you have the, you have the, you have the two principles that are laid out on page uh, nine. Are you looking at the annual report? Well, I'm looking at the actual code. So. Oh, so if you look at, so you've got the two principles, the one that, that I like, uh, is uh, 025, 020, oh, I'm sorry, 020A8. Oh, oh, eight. Oh, I didn't uh, Sometimes it's on the previous page. And goes to 7. 020A7. Oh, oh, I keep going to the next page. Sometimes it's on the top of the page. Oh, the page. oh okay, okay, there we go. Okay. Okay. And that's in a general prohibited conduct, and again, right. versus in the gift section. So that is, you know, the gift section is problematic. Very right. difficult to understand. Well, and the process that we're employing yeah. to evaluate the forms is it's not defined anywhere in the code. And Steve, I thought what was helpful helpful was Assembly Council doing a Tucker's bullet point and that's in here somewhere. Do you know what that is, Lisa? In, uh, it's in the minutes. It's in the minutes from the... Well, you know what, it's actually right in this section that we're on at the very end. Um, <laughs> oh, we're in the teacher gifts, which begins with this page called Human Resources. Okay. And the very last... It's like this thickness because it's that handbook and everything. Right. And then there's um, the email from Julia with the draft. Okay. And it's going to come oh, right before okay. the, the peach color. Right before sheet. the peach color? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she, you can help me find these. <laughs> yeah, it's right. It's going to be impaired on the. Okay. And it says draft across it. Yours doesn't like it. There's your note here, and then there's notes so, okay. from yeah. Julia. Yeah, but it looks email. like this. Notes from oh, right here. There. Okay. So. But can I suggest we probably need to move forward? Oh, I was, oh, yeah. That was the next okay. thing. Okay. Yeah. To, okay. To, to. We haven't been able to understand this in okay. four years. We're not going to understand it in the next <laughs> ten minutes. No. Okay. <laughs> You'll just be able to add more confusion when right. you read that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, and, and Steve may want to just you may want to just take this whole chunk home with you of these. The, I'll t yeah, yeah, just take the, I'll that's take the current good. meeting packet. Yeah, yeah. That's not okay. TV from okay. All right. The nice thing about it is, when she's available and she doesn't run off on her trips like she does occasionally, mm -hmm. yeah. we generally get these things three, four days in advance so you can study them before okay. you come in. Okay. Although there has been time when they bring one the notice of potential violation the day of the meeting, which is the next thing, notice of potential violation 2013-3. This is your peach sheet. Okay. Um, I'm going to figure out a little tabby system up here. I think. Here we go. Color sheet. And since this is a confidential, um, to 
discuss this, we need to go into executive session, correct? Yeah, move into a motion to move into executive session. Second. Moved and seconded. Any, any opposed? And then here, 